All right, welcome back to another video. Today I actually want to talk about different quick shell bars and their settings and systems that are out there. There's quite a few that you can try out and you know install on your system. So I'm not going to go through the entire installation process for all of them, but I do want to show off you know each bar and their unique features. That way you have an idea of which one you want to try out and install you know onto your system. So first I have the uh, Dank Material Shell DMS is the one that I have installed right now that you see at the top of my uh, screen here. And the one thing that I really like about this one is it's simplistic, but has a lot of settings. It's kind of in between as far as, you know, different features wise, but it's also, you know, fairly minimal and simplistic when it comes to the look and feel of it and everything. And this one is optimized for Neary and Hyperlens. You can use it for either. Wayland compositors, so there's no issue there. And it has a very easy, quick install script if you want to use the full dot files available for most distros. I believe it'll work on Fedora and most Arch based distros. And you can install it just like that, or you can go the other route and install it onto your system if you already have one of those. You can actually just install the AR package, which is the DMS shell dash bin, and then you can enable it in your system. It has pretty good documentation for all of that. So you would have it spawn on startup and have everything running as you need it. And you do have to have certain things enabled and it goes through all the documentation. It has the, you know, all the bindings and stuff that you need to spawn certain things within your system. So definitely great documentation. It's pretty easy to get set up and installed. As far as the actual settings, I guess I'll start on this side. So you do have an application launcher by default that's enabled. And then you have your workspaces and then, you know, what app that you have open. And then in the middle here, you do have like a control center where you can do, you know, your media, your weather, and then it opens settings as well. And then on the right hand side, you have all your system tasks. It also has a cool system resources option here showing all of the processes that are running and it shows you a GPU and your memory and your CPU usage as well, which I like that aspect. And then if you click on this, you have a quick settings section, which is editable. You can change these different options. You have the lock screen, the power menu. Um, and settings and settings, you, you have personalization, which is like the quick, you know, change settings that you can edit the wallpaper. You can have it cycle through different wallpapers, have it use the dynamic theming. A lot of these bars have the dynamic theming, which is nice. So it, like it all themes with your wallpaper that you have selected, which I really like that aspect. So you don't have to manually theme everything yourself. Time and weather, you can add 24 hour. We have the weather options here. This one's nice because it has the auto location. Not many of these have an auto location option. So it specifies your location automatically. You can do Fahrenheit or Celsius as well. On the dank bar, you can put it on the top, bottom, left, right, wherever you want it. And then you have options for spacing, the gaps and the, uh, the corners, if you want it to be rounded on the corners and everything. And then you have widget management. So you can add new widgets if you want to. They have a bunch of different widgets you can add in your bar you can select which ones you want left center and right for the widgets themselves this is workspace settings media player settings and the system updater you can add a custom one if you don't want what's there by default I actually don't know what it round by default it might just be pac-man syu but i'm not 100 percent sure and then you do have some options for running apps and notification pops up they do have its own dock as well if i show the dock here you can see it's this dock right here i do have a different dock you know installed down there that's why it's it's kind of duplicating right now but it's a pretty decent dock for default settings for displays it shows all the displays and where you want things to show up so if you want it the dank bar to show up on all displays or individual displays you can set those here and then we also have the launcher option which you can change like the logo icon that you see in the top here, and then whether you want the color override to change based on the primary surface or a custom color. And then you can sort your actual launcher things by alphabetical or recently used. And then themes and colors, you can you know change if you want a cappuccino or if you want a dynamic based on your wallpaper, you can choose and pick which ones you want. And then you have the option for the font settings and sync with the portal, which is nice. I like the dark mode and light mode syncing that it has in there and then icons and actually has the to apply the GTK colors and the QT colors as well, which so this one has, you know, pr pretty good amount of settings and options for you in here. So definitely a good pick if you're looking for a bar that's kind of, you know, minimal, but has, you know, a bunch of settings and options for you. The next one we have is the Celestia Show. 
Um, this one is pretty good. A lot of people um, do like this one. This one's definitely better if you install it as a complete dot files and not just over top of your system. It doesn't have direct support with Neary, um, only Hyperland. Um, so this will be an only Hyperland option, but it does have some pretty good options and settings here. All right, so now as you can see, I have the other shell enabled here. So this is the Celestia shell and my workspaces are not gonna work on this particular one because this is made for Hyperland. So workspace is not gonna work since I'm on a Neary desktop. It does give you the full bar all the way across. It has a settings menu down here in the corner with a keep wake and a screen recorder and then like your quick settings toggles down here. I really love the animations that they do on these quick show options. Everything's really fluid and nice animations. We do have the top bar up here as well. It'll show all of your settings and quick panel things for the weather and for your media controls. And then you also have some performance controls as well. I like the way everything is set up on here. You have your options over here for your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, network and battery and then a task icons down there as well, your time and date. And the power menu over here that pops up and you have the different options to, to reboot, restart, and all that good stuff as well. It does have an app launcher as well. I'm not sure what the actual keybind because I don't have this actually set up for it, but it does have its own app launcher in there as well. So yeah, this is the Celestia. It's not my favorite, to be honest with you. I think it's a really good look and feel, but it doesn't have that much customization because if I go into on um, the settings icon here, every, you know, this is all work in progress. You do get more settings if you install the full dot files. Otherwise, there isn't much as far as changing it and making it your own and customizing everything. If you want to be able to customize and do a lot of changes to your setup, then I would not suggest in the Celestia shell. But if you want something you know good out of the box, this is definitely a good pick for you. The other one that we have here is the Exo material shell for Neary and Hyperland. So this one does work for Neary and Hyperland. Let me go ahead and kill the Celestia bar, and then we'll run the Exo shell. This is the Exo shell here. As you see, it has a nice bar at the top. This one is floating. I don't know if it was floating by default, but that's the way I have it set up right now. If you go into the options, you have your notifications panel and a full settings option here. And over here, it does not have like an application bar, but there is an application launcher that you can bind to your settings. They have uh, quite a few screenshots showing off what it can look like to have a bunch of options. We want to put it on the side, the top, um, have it floating, have two bars. Um, so this has, does have an option for two bars um, as well. So if you want both sides or a top and a side, we can make one more like a dock if you want to. Uh, this one does have quite a few settings and it is compatible with Neary and Hyperland. So depending on which one you're using, it's definitely a good option for you. As far as the actual settings go, you do have quite a few options. You can have the quick settings where you can change where you want the bar to be. If you want it, you know, on the left side, top, bottom, wherever you want the bar to be. And you have these different density options. Cozy is a little bit larger comfortable, a little bit smaller, compact, and then condensed gets even smaller. Then you have the separated option, which looks pretty nice where it doesn't have the bar going all the way across. And then you can have it, whether you want the modules to have the backgrounds or not. I like no backgrounds. I think it's a cleaner look overall. And then you can have the rounded corners for the shell. If you want those disabled or when in full screen or always, whichever one you prefer. On some of these, I don't like the rounded corners and some of them I do. So it just depends on the look and feel that you have set up. You can have a bunch of different color schemes um, and you can choose what wallpaper folder you want all of your wallpapers to be set in. So, you know, that works well. It has a bunch of different options for your interface, for your initial bar and then the secondary bar and your bar modules. Um, so this is where all the modules and everything, you know, appear, how they appear. If you want them to be there at all, you can center them, put them at the end, turn them off and on. Here's the launcher widget. Here's the actual launcher, very simplistic. You can have that launch, whatever you need it to launch. It works really well. It's a little more simplistic than the other ones, but some people like a more simplistic launcher. So it's a nice pick if you want to go with something like that. You may have a task widget option to add running apps. That's if you want to add a bar at the bottom, like a dock, you can have a bar at the bottom with these task widget options in there. And then some extra modules, you can have it fixed workspaces your hours to be a 24 or 12 hour, and then you can add like your, your show date and stuff like that as well. So pretty good amount of settings. This is where you go into your service for notifications, recording and on-screen display options. And then you have your network, Bluetooth and system. This one is the EXO.
option here. Once again, this one has some pretty good settings. I think as far as minimal ones go, this is kind of minimal, just like the DMS one, but I think I like the DMS one a little bit better as far as like the amount of settings and options and stuff that you can change. But this is also a good pick, especially if you're looking for Neary and Hyperlin compatibility. This one works well for that as well. And then last but not least, we have the Noctilia shell. So we can go ahead and try that one out. So we'll go ahead and kill that shell and then we'll run as you can see that shell is up there now and it shows like you're running apps and everything so that is this one here and it has a, a quick install option for installing it onto your system you can download it through the aur or you can do like a manual installation it does have a nixos option and also shows how to run the shell depending on which one you're using this one is compatible with miri and hyperlin which is nice to have it available for multiple whaling compositors and not just one. And then it has a bunch of different keybinds to be able to launch different aspects of the bar within your settings and add them to keybind. So that's a nice feature to have in there to have all of those options to be able to launch it just like the Dink Material Shell one did have as well. If you look here, it has a welcome thing here. So you can go through and set everything. It'll set your, your wallpaper to what you want it to be. And then you can set different options to choose your experience. So I do like this like quick settings, like first time use case. I think that's a really awesome way to, you know, get newcomers to be able to build their, their experience that they want out of the box. And it's quick and easy to be able to do so without being overwhelmed with all of the different settings. So this is a really nice feature to have to change your appearance based on your wallpaper. You can have it expressive. As you see, it's changing, you know, real time here, monochrome. I always like the tonal spot or the content one. I think those are my two favorite. You can have the rainbow and have a bunch of different colors, but I think I like the content the best. Then you just click all done and then you have your bar. So it's really nice and quick, but if you want to go into all of the settings, this one has the most settings out of all of them. There's so many different options you can change in here. You have interface, options with appearance, screen quarters, everything in there. You have the bar, uh, top, bottom, left, right. The density of the bar. You can also float the bar if you want on this one. Always like a nice floating bar. You can change the margins and the opacity. You can change the widget positions for everything that you have. This one has all the workspaces in the center, but if you want them on the right, you can definitely easily change that. And also which monitors you want them on. If you don't want it on all the monitors, it's nice to be able to change that quickly. You have your control center, which I can show what that looks like. I guess this is what the control center looks like. So you have all the different options for your weather, volume, and microphone options. And then it has some processes and the media, if anything's playing in the background. And that's a nice feature to have. And then you also have a dock option. This one does, does have a dock. You can pick it, it just floats on top. Very simplistic dock. You can pin, focus, or close them on there. Not a whole bunch of options for the dock, but I like that it has a dock included because some people do want to add a dock quickly and easily, and that's a good way to do it. And then for the launcher settings is the app launcher itself. So you can have the app launcher launch. And I can show you what the app launch looks robust. That's very easy to select something and spawn it. You can choose your audio devices, primary media players, all that stuff. You can set all your default settings. So I like that this is, it's kind of gives you like more of a, a desktop feel having all your audio display settings right in here, which is a nice touch to have per monitor settings and brightness. So if you're on a laptop, you can change the brightness for the screen on screen display where you want that to appear and which monitors you want to, that to display on. Same with notifications. By default, it does all of them. And unless you specify which one you want, then you can change the duration. Certain things pop up in the locations you want it to pop up in, which is nice. And then network, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and then you have location. You have to, you know, select your location here. I don't think this has an automatic selection. So you have to specify where you want that location to be, but you can also set your 12 hour, 24 hour and enable the weather options there. And then you have the color scheme options. It does use the Matugan scheme type as well. You do have different templates. You can set your DTK and QT and K color schemes here just by setting them also for your terminals. If you have them installed for different programs that you might have. This one I can set directly for Discord, which is really cool and detected Vex top that's already installed. So you can change the appearance of that pretty easily. And then a miscellaneous as well. So that's a really nice touch to have that kind of included to be able to theme the rest of your app. So I think this is a good one, especially for beginners. 
to be able to get into theming your entire desktop and have those options kind of baked in. Then you can choose your wallpaper directory to actually select your wallpaper and look and feel of that wallpaper. You can also do automation for random wallpapers. You have a screen recorder and hooks. Uh, so that's all of them. There's quite a few options you can choose from for different shells. I have them all installed. I can switch between any of the ones that I want at any given moment. You just have to make sure you set it up to you know spawn on your specific uh, Wayland compositor that you want it to you know, spawn by default. So you have your DMS, the, Noct the Noctilia option, Stia shell option and the expo ones. If you find any other ones that you want me to, you know, go over, please let me know. If you enjoy my content, please definitely, you know, like and subscribe. I mean, you know, helps me know, you know, which, you know, videos that you like to see and helps the algorithm know as well. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.